the lists are important for navigation. So let me kind of go through how to make a nav bar. So the idea with a nav bar is to have something going across the page where you can select. So let me show you an example of a nav bar. Uh, and I want you to create nav bars for your next assignment. So the nav bar basically starts as a list, but you see how it's going across. So it's the typical format that you see in most websites. But the way that you create this is you actually begin with an unnumbered list. And then you take that unnumbered list and it's a list of links and you basically apply the style sheet to get rid of the bullet, to get rid of the underline, and to make the vertical list go horizontal. So I have it step by step. This is the actual code to do it. But let me actually take you through it step by step so you kind of understand uh, the process. So I have this presentation now. And this is where Emmett, again, comes in handy. So this is the final version, this code that you see here. But let's begin um, with a new web page. So we'll start from the very beginning. And I'll show you how to do this from the very first steps. So I'm going to create a folder here. And we'll call this uh, horizontal nav bar. Okay, so I'm going to create a horizontal nav bar and I'm going to go through the steps. And all the steps are in this presentation. So it's kind of breaking it down in the simplest way possible for you. So does everybody see this good? So first I'm going to create my boilerplate. I'm just going to use that Emmett shortcut of exclamation point again. So really quickly, I have my boilerplate. So the first step for the nav bar is to create a set of links. So your links are going to be where the navigation is going to take your um, viewer. So creating the links is the first step. So here, I'll go back into this. Um, basically, I have um, four A tags. So I can type these out if I want, or I can use the Emmet uh, shorthand again. So the fast way to do this with Emmet is to um, hit A, then say um, in uh, my href is going to be my attribute. So in the square brackets, I can say href, and that's going to equal my link. What you can do is just say um, href number sign. So it doesn't, it's not going to go anywhere, but it's still going to be usable. And then in my curly braces, I can um, say, let's say page, and then I can give it a number sign. So it's going to number these pages, and then I'm going to multiply it, and that's going to give me the number of links. So now I have, um, when I hit enter, four pages. If I want to have a nav bar with more information, I would just change that multiplier. So let's say I have eight links. So now I'm in a tab, now I have page one through eight, and I have eight links. So that's the first step, is to have your links set up. But what we really want to do is put those links in a list. So what we really want is um, a list. So Lists are basically good ways to organize. So if you want to organize a series of things, lists are very helpful. And a nav bar is essentially that. It's a list of links. So I'm going to create that list of links. Now here's an example of um, what that list should kind of look like. So you have your unnumbered list, which is going to give you bullet points for the list items. and That's basically set up, you know, like this uh, UL for your unnumbered list. And then you have your first uh, list item. And then you have inside the list item, 
the actual link, and that's your a tag. And here I'm just going to use the number symbol because we're not really going anywhere yet. And then, you know, I'll have my page one, page two, page three. Uh, I can cut and paste this. And then go back and change the page numbers like that. And this is basically what you want. You just want a, a list. The faster way to do it though is with Emmet. So the Emmet shorthand for this would be UL, my unnumbered list, and then I have a list item within that. And then that list item is going to appear a number of times, let's say four times. And then inside the list item, I'm going to have my A tag, and then my A tag, my A tags, I'm going to set the href just to number sign for now. And then I will give each um, A tag a name of page and that will be numbered. So I get something like this. So I have list item one, page one, list item two, page two, list item three, page three, it's the same thing that I just did, um, but this time I did it with Emmet, and I did it all with uh, one line of code. So here are my same thing. It's the same thing I had before. It's just this, this way, it's just faster. So what I'll do here is I'll basically take that and I'll throw it inside this comment. So if you need to reuse that, you can. So this is the beginning of the, the navigation, is this list. But basically what you do now is you take these bulleted number list items and you basically just get rid of the bullet, you get rid of the underline, and you change the uh, stacking order, the vertical, to horizontal. So, so that's... So the next step I'm going to show you is how do we get rid of the bullet point and how do we get rid of the underline? So, so basically what we're doing is creating a style sheet that's going to um, remove the styling that we created. So I'm going to create another style tag. And then inside that style tag, I'm going to um, change the bolted list. So what you can do is you can say, um, I have the UL is the, the child of the nav. So that's the formatting we can use, nav space UL. And then we can use a property called list style. And if I set list style to none, and then let me bring my web page up here. So if I say list style none, I hit save, it gets rid of the bullet point. So that's the first step, you get rid of the bullet point. Uh, so the next step is to take everything that's vertical. So right now, the list is vertical, we wanna make it go across the top, we wanna make it horizontal. So that's going to be the, the next step. So to do that, I'm going to use a property called display and I'm going to set it to um, inline block. What in, inline block is basically doing is taking um, something that's set as a block level element and making it inline. Um, so if I go into my style tag, and this time I'm affecting the list item, which is the child of the unnumbered list. And I say display um, inline block. Right now, each one of these list items, an LI is basically a block level item. So what you want to do is have it go horizontal. And the way you do that is you change your block level items to inline. So I can say block level inline like this. 
and that will do it. Um, what inline block does though, is that it's kind of like a hybrid between block and inline. So block, inline block basically does the same thing, but at the same time, it's still treating these as block elements. So I can do other things with a block element. Like I can add, um, padding, uh, padding, You know, so the padding is going to spread things out a little bit. Um, I can also change the um, the width and the height, and kind of got to guess. That spreads it out even more, and then I can give each one a, um, a background color as well. And here, once I got that background color, I can adjust that width a little bit. So uh, I, I actually want to adjust the height. Can you give a percentage for each one? Yeah, you could give, um, you can make the, the width. If I have um, four items, I can instead say, um, you know, I'll say 24 because I'll take the, um, I'll even say less than that because I got to take the padding into consideration. So now it it um, centers it a little bit more. So yeah, you can use percentages. But basically what I did here is I took my vertical uh, list and I made it horizontal. And then the last thing you want to do is change the, um, get rid of that underline underneath because um, that's not necessary for this. So you're, Nav bars usually don't have the links as underlines. They're basically just presenting those links as buttons that you can press. So final step is to use um, what's a property called text decoration. So now we're going to affect the A tag itself because the A tag is what gives the link the underline. So I can, the A tag is a child of the list, which is a child of UL, which is the child of nav. And then I can say uh, text decoration uh, none. And now that I got rid of text align center. I think I have to add that actually to um, the list though. So I can align my text to be in the center of each one of those boxes. I'll fix the height a little bit. Can you go back over how you got rid of the underline because it froze when you were doing it? Oh, okay. So um, I'll comment it out here. So underline is basically using text decoration set to none. So if I go into that list, the um, property is text decoration. Okay. And we set it to none. So text decoration none it takes get rid of it's get rid of the, it's getting rid of the underline. Other um, values for that are um, um, line through. So let's say you want to add a line through something, you can add a line through. Um, it can also add a um, line over, which can, can be kind of interesting so that line adds a line on top so you have these different options for text decoration but most of the time it's set to none in the in a, in a nav bar you don't want to see that from a user interface standpoint it's not necessary to see uh, and, um, you know you can play with the text here too so uh, maybe font family is um, sans serif you know, you play with the font size, uh, but that's the basic idea to create a, a nav bar and it begins with the, um, the list that you create. Now you can actually, um, and, and again, you can actually create one um, line of code that, that gives you all of that. So you can create all of this really quickly. Uh, so basically, I want you to use this. I want you to use 
a nav bar for your next assignment. But there's one more thing we want to do. Uh, when I hover over these, I want there to be a change. So what you can use is something called Scioto code. So here we can use um, what's a couple of different of these uh, pseudo codes. And what um, pseudo, pseudo uh, codes are, the pseudo class, is basically a means to actually use a style to change an action to actually change what's happening in the actual HTML. So for example, if I hover over one of those pink boxes, maybe I want those pink boxes to change color, or maybe I want the text itself to change color. You know, it just depends on what you want to do. So if I want to um, have the actual box change color, I can say nav um, ul for the child of the nav is the ul li, and then you do a, um, a colon. You hit colon, type hover, and then you pick your color. And let's say, I want to say um, like yellow. And I think actually uh, we might, okay, um, let me see here. So here I'm causing the hover to change the, um, the text itself. Um, if I want to change the actual box, let's see if I can. Oh, so let's say I want to change the actual box. Instead of using color, I can use background color. And I have to apply it though to the list. So now when I hover over this, it changes my background color. And I lost my height. Um, there. Eh, don't need it that high. So, so hover is basically letting me change something when I hover over it. So the other, um, there's basically um, three other pseudo codes to play with and you always have to use that um, colon first to designate what tag is being affected by the um, pseudo code the hover and then in the curly braces is the change that happens when you utilize that so we can also use um, um, there's a couple other ones here there's active Um, there is, uh, visited. And there is link. So each one of these does something different. Active is basically the page that you're on. So if you go to a page and you use active, that's the page that you're on. Um, you probably have a separate class for that to represent that. So if I have a class down here, called current, and I ch change this, li to have the class for the style sheet then make I'll make it green so that kind of represents if I if I click it's showing it's showing me the um, active page that I would actually go to so hover is hovering over something active is clicking 
on something. Um, visited is when you go to the link and then you go back, then that page should change. So visited, um, you know, if I go to page three and then I go back to page one, page three would be the color that I would designate for visited. Here you're not going to see it because I don't have a page three to go to. I go to page three and to go back, you're really not going to pay to see the difference. And then we have link. But typically you would use hover, active, and visited. There's an acronym for this. They say love, hate, so it's L-V-H-A.